Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is lesson two, square roots. Exercise one through four says, determine positive square roots. So when we see positive square roots, they don't tell us here, but those are called principal square roots. Okay, so the principal part, that they just mean positive square root. In certain tests, you might be asked to find the principal square root instead of this word, and you need to know what that is. So positive is principal square root. So why do they say positive square root? Well, if I take the square root of 81, that is equivalent to the square root of 9 times 9, which equals the square root of 9 times the square root of 9. Okay, so I can break that up like that. Well, the square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of 9 is 3, so that's 3 times 3. So I'm just showing all my work here, and so if 81 is 9 times 9, and 9 is 3 times 3, then the square root of 81 is 9. But if I take negative 9 and multiply it by negative 9, then I get a negative times a negative is positive, and 9 times 9 is 81. So in essence, the square root of 81 is positive 9 or negative 9, because when we square something, it's something times itself. So a negative times a negative is positive. So the square root of 81 is positive 9, but it's also negative 9. And so the real answer, the complete answer is positive 9 and negative 9. So negative 9 times negative 9 is 81, and 9 times 9 is 81. So the square root of 81 is either positive 9 or negative 9. But since they're asking for the principal square root here, then we are going to just do the positive 9. And that's what this is asking. So hopefully that makes sense to you with all these principal roots and positives and negatives and all that stuff. So in this lesson, all we're focusing on is positive roots. We're not worried about the negatives. Okay, so here we go, number two. Now you try these, pause the video, see if you can do these, and then come back and we'll discuss them. Okay, so assuming you've tried these, here we go. The square root of 225. Well, if I don't know my multiplication tables, um, I really encourage you to try to do this without calculators. Uh, calculators are really designed to do large numbers and maybe checking your work when you're done. But if you get practice with these and you'll get really good with your multiplication tables and division and all that. So calculators actually make us weaker. So try to do it without a calculator. If I have a 225, I can figure out what this reduces down to using a factor tree. And since it ends in 5, I divide by 5. 5 goes into 20 four times with a remainder of 2. 5 goes into 25 five times. 5 goes into 45 five times. And 5 times 15 is 45. And 15 is, I'm sorry, not 15, 9. 9 times 5 is 45. And 9 is 3 times 3. So when we do a factor tree and we put all our primes on the left, it lines up nice like this. And then when I write these out in order, then I would say it'd be 3 times 3 times 5 times 5 equals 225. But remember, if I have two numbers under the radical, they become one outside the radical. So if I try to simplify this, I can now do this. I can put my radical symbol here. And I say, okay, I've got a pair of threes here. So I can put a three outside because two inside equals one outside. And I have a pair of fives. So if I have two fives out inside, one can go outside. Well, those are all of my factors. There is nothing left over here. So this goes away. And then I put this back together and three times five is 15. So 15 times 15 is 225, so therefore the square root of 225 is 15. Okay? Okay, this one may have stumped you. Negative 36. Okay, so what is the square root of negative 36? So you might say to yourself, well, 
6 times 6 is 36, so it's 6, but this is negative, so I'm going to say it's negative 6, but it says a positive square root, so I'm just going to make that positive. Okay, that is not correct. 6 times 6 is not negative 36, so let me explain this with a factor tree again. So if I have a negative 36, the first thing I want to do is get factor out a negative 1. So negative 36 divided by negative 1 is positive 36. And then I do know 36 is a perfect square, so I'm just going to go right to the positive 6 is 6 times 6. So here are my factors. Now, they're not prime factors, but they are factors, and these are perfect squares. So my, prime, my factorization is negative 1 times 6 times 6. Okay, now remember what I said about having two, out, two numbers under the radical. So I have two 6s under here to make 36. One can come outside. Okay, but I still have this negative 1 hanging out here inside, okay, and that never can come out. That is an algebra 2 concept, and that is an imaginary number. I'm not going to go any further than that. I'm not going to explain what that is. So there is no positive, okay, N-A, not F, well, I don't know if I'd say N-A. Um, I'm going to say does not exist. And I use DNE for that. Does not exist. The positive square root of negative 36 does not exist. It is 6 square root negative 1, and that's the imaginary unit. Um, but let's just stop at. This is not my answer, obviously, because I still have this left over. Number four, determine the positive square root of 49 if it exists. Explain. So the square root of 49 equals... 7, the square root of 7 times 7, and as I said earlier, if you have two of the same thing inside, it becomes one outside. So the positive square root of 49 is 7. Okay, so now here it has this discussion thing. So if I have the square root of 1, I'm going to do these in different colors for a reason, and I have the square root of 2, and I have the square root of 3, and I have the square root of 4, and so on and so on and so on. And I have the square root of 0. Well, 0 times 0 is 0. So the square root of 0 is 0. And 1 times 1 is 1. So the square root of 1 is 1. And 2 times 2 is 4. So the square root of 4 is 2. Okay, so continuing in this fashion, this is going to be the square root of 9. 3 times 3. And 4 times 4 is 16, okay? And actually, I want to do these all in the same color for what I'm uh, explaining. Okay, so the square root of 0 is 0, square root of 1 is 1, square root of 4 is 2, square root of 9 is 3, square root of 16 is 4. So what we're looking at, if you were looking at a multiplication table, these are the diagonals. The perfect squares are across the diagonal. Now, if I keep going here, and how about I just keep going with these different colors, and I do the square root of 5, and I do the square root of 6, square root of 7, um, square root of 8, square root of 10, square root of 11, square root of 12, square root of 13, square root of 14 and the square root of 15 and I put these where they belong in the new in the number line well 0 and 1 are consecutive integers underneath the radical so the radicands are consecutive integers so these are in order 0 1 4 9 16 and their square roots are down below well, the square root of 2 is more than 1, but less than 4, but it's closer to 1, so I'd put that there. The square root of 3 would be over here somewhere. So the square root of one, 2 is 1 point something, and the square root of 3 is 1 point something, but it's closer to 2 than the square root of 2. And the square root of 5 is more than 4, so it would go here, and then 6, and then 7, and then square root of 8. All these numbers are two point something. If you put them in your calculator, you would see. And as we get further along, and then we get square root of 9. Well, that's perfect square. That is 3. And the square root of 10 is more than 9. 
11 is more than 10. The square root of 12 is more than the square root of 11. And the square root of 13 is more than the square root of 12. I'm running out of room here, but I hope you understand what's going on here. These are going in order. And then the square root of 16 is a perfect square. Now, with that being said, the square root of 0, the square root of 1, the square root of 4, I should be circling the numbers down below, these are all rational numbers because they can be formed as a ratio. Okay? And this one as well, and this one here. Because this is 0 over 1, which is 0. 1 over 1 is 1. 4 over 1 is 4. And 3 over 1 is 3. And 4 over 1 is 4. And the reason I'm saying this is because these are all rational numbers. Okay. So what do we call numbers that can't be represented as fractions? So non-perfect squares, square root of 2, square root of 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 17, 18, 19, all the way up to 25, not including 25. So these numbers cannot be expressed as fractions because they are non-repeating, non-terminating decimals. So all of these numbers here are irrational. Okay, so in this chapter section, we'll be discussing what's rational and irrational. So non-perfect squares are irrational. Well, keep in mind that 3.14159 blah, blah, blah is pi. So 3.14 is somewhere around here. So this is pi, and that is also irrational. So irrational numbers are numbers like pi, and non-perfect squares are also irrational. Okay, so now we have all these exercises, and it says to determine the positive square root of the number given. If the number is not a perfect square, determine which whole number the square root would be closest to, and use guess or ch and check to give an approximate answer to one or two decimal places. So if I take the square root of 49 and I do a factor tree, that is 7 times 7. So the square root of 49 equals the square root of 7 times 7, so therefore it equals 7. All right, but now when we get down to the square root of 62, let me move this up. The square root of 62, if I do a factor tree, 62 is even, so I can factor out a 2. 62 times 30, or 31 times 2 is 62, and 31 is prime. So I have two prime numbers, so my prime factorization is 2 times 31. So if I simplify this and I do my radical thingy here, okay, and remember what I said, if you have a pair of numbers in your prime factorization that can go outside as one, well, I don't have any pairs. So when I don't have any pairs, they have to stay under the radical. So therefore, this is non, it can't be simplified. So now I need to determine on a number line what two perfect squares are between these. So let me do perfect squares. Zero times zero is zero. One times one is one. 2 times 2 equals 4, 3 times 3 equals 9, 4 times 4 equals 16, 5 times 5 is 25, and so on. Oops. I'm only going to do a couple more. So these are the perfect squares from 0 through 12. So if I take the square root of 62 right here, let me just rewrite it in a different color. The square root of 62, if I cannot simplify that, well, I bring it over here. Where does it go? What's it between? 9 and 16? No, no, no. Right here. The square root of 62 is between 49 and 64. So I'm going to write the square root of 49 here and the square root of 64 here. Well, 49 is, square root of 49 is 7 and the square root of 64 is 8. So the square root of 62 is between and it is over here closer to 8. So... If I try to estimate that, I'm thinking it's probably somewhere around 7.8. So if I do that, 
times itself, 8 times 8 is 64. 7 times 8 is 56, plus 6 is 62. And 7 times 8 is 56, carry the 5. 7 times 7 is 49, plus 5 is 54. And add. And I got 60.84. So there's 7.8. So then 7.9 would be 7.9 times 7.9. 9 times 9 is 81. 9 times 7 is 63. Plus 8 is 71. 9 times 7 is 63. 7 times 7 is 49. Plus 6 is 55. And 1, 4, 2, 6. So that is 62.41. So I now know the square root of 62 is less than 62.41 is more than 62 and 60.84. So 62 is between these two numbers, but closer to this. So I'd say it would be approximately 7 point. That's a pretty bad approximation. I'm off the board, that's why. The square root of 62 would be approximately 7.8. And we're closer to 8.4 than we are 4.1. That's 16 away. That's 41 away from 62. Actually, that's 1 point something away. So it is closer to 62.41. So I'd say it'd probably be 7.87 or something like that. And again, we're approximating. Okay, so I brought in the calculator, and I put in the square root of 62, and I hit enter, and it's 7.874. Well, I said 7.87, so that's pretty close. Okay, so I just wanted to show you what's going on there. Okay, so now let's do the square root of 122. So, 122 is an even number. It's not a perfect square, and again, if we get comfortable with these factor trees, I get 2 and 61. Unfortunately, 61 is prime, so I cannot simplify this any further. So I look for over here, and I see 121 right here, and I see 144, so obviously 122 is here, and it's very close to 11. So I would probably say that is 11.0 something or 11.1 .1 as an estimate. Okay, so let's get the calculator and check, see if I'm close and I take the square root of 122, and I get 11.04. So it's 11.04. Okay, now 400, if I take the square root of 400, and I divide it by two, I get two times 200. Divide that by two, and that's two times 100. And you might not have noticed any perfect squares until here, because 100 is 10 times 10. So I, I'm going to just jump right to that perfect square. So my factorization is here. So if I write that out, I write 2 times 2 times 10 times 10. Well, the square root of 400 equals, and we can put, I didn't leave enough space next to my equal sign. We can put our pairs outside as 1. So if I have 2 times 2 is 4, the square root of 4 is 2. So I can put the 2 out here more room there and I have two tens so that can become one outside and I'm left with nothing I don't have anything left over so this goes away I don't want to put a variable there I'll just do this okay so this is gone so two times ten is twenty so yes I could have done four hundred is twenty times twenty and gotten it right away Okay, so now number nine says, which numbers in exercises five through eight are not perfect squares? Well, the answer was six and seven. And that should be an approximation. Okay, so number six and seven were not perfect squares, but five and eight were. Okay, that is the end of lesson two. Review the lesson summary and go do your problem set.